What up, everybody? It's April Dawn. Let's talk about it. This is Live, Work, Pose. Oh, season two, episode four, five. Work. I'm giving you a cotton candy beat today. Look at that. I have this velvet lippy absolute something I can't read at the bottom, honey, but it'll focus in a second. Okay, hopefully it will focus and you can be able to see that. It's a velvet lippy. The color is rosewood. I have it in the middle and then I also have this color on. It's sugar butter, matte pink. And I don't know if I knew what I was doing, but you know I gave it a try. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and get into it. This episode was real sad, y'all. I mean, I'm trying to give y'all energy and lightness and lightheartedness, but it was a pretty heavy episode. It started off heavy, and it did not get, take its foot off our neck. Throughout the whole episode, I ugly cried. That's why I got makeup on, because I cried, honey. I cried. You hear me? I cried like she was my first cousin. You hear me? I was in here going through. I'm so sad they killed her character off the show. Like, I, I'm going to talk about it all at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and get started. We start off at the ball, okay? We having a good time, everybody voguing. I don't know all the name of these people, but you know all the people is out there voguing from the House of Wintour. They out there killing it, okay? They're breakdancing. The category is um, you, trade. It's like trade. I think they call it lofting. Lofting. So they're getting ready to dance. Basically, trade is like a gay man who is not a feminine, who is masculine, and, you know, can pass for any masculine homeboy or whatever. So they come in there, break dancing, dancing, doing their thing, was looking real good. They was out there killing it, right? And so, they're, you know, he's like, okay, somebody come out there, he kill it, tear the flow up. Is anybody else going to come out here before we shut down the category? And here come Candy ass. I said, oh, Lord, here we go. So here come Candy coming through the back with the whole bustier on, looking like Madonna, you know, paying tribute homage, okay, to Madonna, dancing and, you know, doing the voguing and all of that. And he's like, girl, this is not even the category. The category is Trey. See, it's like, what are you doing? And so, you know, Pray Tell give us one of his famous reads, reading her down. Everybody's laughing at Candy. You know, it's she like a big joke, you know. At these moments, I do be feeling sorry for her, and I see why she fight back so hard. He told her, you not a dancer, girl. You not a vulgar. And if you keep on moving like that, girl, that silicone gon' bust. I said, well, damn. Well, you know, why you always ride me? Why you always treat me like this? There's a movement that you're talking about. You always talking about us, and let's show what we can bring to the movement and what we're bringing to the table. And you fail to realize that I have something to bring to the table, too, and I have heart, and I have talent, and all of that stuff. So I'm not gonna lie. The reads that he do... With her are pretty funny, but he do be going hard on Candy. Like, he go hard on Candy, like, really excessively. And it's kind of like, it's something else going on that we don't know about. And he's like, girl, y'all give her the scores. So she got five, 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 fives across the board. So, you know, he's like, the scores don't lie. And I don't know what to tell you, honey. Like, I don't know what to tell you, girl. And so she gets mad. And she tell him that he's going to regret his words because she's a star. So Blanca and Pray Tell go to the hospital as they're walking in. It was really cute. The little nurse was just voguing there. She was like, oh, you voguing. You move your body like this. And he was like, girl, you need to work on the move, sis. Okay, get that together. They go and meet with Nurse Judy. And so they're talking about the cabaret that they have, you know, the one that they put together last year, talking about it's going to be a bigger event this year. That's what he thinks they're there for. But really, they're there to talk to him about getting on these ACT pills, taking the pills, and, you know, kind of starting to get treatment because his... T-cell count is apparently getting lower. And Blanca has told Dr. Judy that he's doing some old voodoo stuff, holistic stuff, where you're like taking, eating a pound of butter a day, child. And they was in her kitchen warming up butter and shit. I was like, y'all doing the absolute most, okay? I did read in the comments on one video, somebody said that that was actually a thing. Like people thought if you got fat or whatever, that you wouldn't die or something like that. And he was like, I mean, just the, you know, the absolute misinformation that was going on around the disease at that time but um he's very resistant to this idea i mean he tells them you know if they love him they need to find another way to love him he's not ready to be on any pills he don't want to take it and you know granted i understand like i said before in the past videos the azt was very you know it was worse than chemotherapy so some of the side effects 
um, because they haven't shown Blanca having any side effects, so I don't know if they're going to show that part of the disease uh, or that part of the treatment, or, you know, maybe some people had bad side effects and maybe some people did, and I don't know. Maybe somebody can speak to that in the comments for me. But um, I can see why he would be scared to take it. But, you know, basically he's telling her he want to go the holistic route, and Nurse Judy is like, that shit ain't going to work. I'm telling you now, you need to take these pills or you're going to die. And so he gets upset with them, and he tells them he about to go try to enjoy whatever he got left of his day. Pray Tell meets up with the MC committee. I guess they have a committee of all the MCs. Um, they're talking about different things, like having a moment of silence, one moment of silence instead of so many because it's kind of taking over the, it's taking too much time. That tells you how many people are dying through this time. That was just a, like a little reminder of how many people are dying during this time period, right? That they just can only take one moment of silence because it's taking up too much time. I thought that was uh, really interesting. It was it was real quick, but I, it really touched me. Um, they're saying that they're not a tourist attraction, but they need to spruce up the, the ball, you know, maybe get some new categories and, you know, make these people pay their dues because they can't buy no trophies without no dues. So, you know, just order business stuff, right? And um, we see that Candy is lurking in the corner. And when she said... When they was like, how you find out about the meeting? She was like, oh, you know, I heard word on the street. And, you know, everybody know this is where you bottoms brunch. I cried. Okay, on the inside, I said, not you bottoms brunch. No. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss her so much. Oh, my God. That was hilarious. He introduces, um, they're talking about the category of lip sync. And now, if you think about it now, that's like, literally one of the biggest things that drag queens do or not nah, the biggest things in a gay community is is like lifting it doing karaoke the drag queens do it people just i mean it's like a huge thing right so apparently at this time the white boys was doing it it was like a white people thing and you know pray tell is like totally against it he don't want to do it and she was like y'all know i was shine and then they said which i want you to recognize that she did get trophies but she got them in face so she has a beautiful face, her bone structure. If you look at Candy, pretty girl. But she always got face trophies. So um, it wasn't like she was totally outcast in her own community as well. But we have to remember that transgender people are like on the lowest, lowest, even in their own community. She comes over to the table. She wants interest categories. They say no. She get upset and she jump on, you know, pray tail with a butter knife and try to slit his throat. He's like, girl, what you gonna do? You gonna slice, you gonna slice my throat in front of everybody? And so she gets her stuff and leaves. And right when she about to leave, she turns around and throws something <laughs> like i love her like i'm gonna miss her character so much y'all don't even much understand i love this girl and she ends up you know she leaves we're back at the ball and the category is the category is higher than heaven so they have to come with lofty you know abstract you know ideas fashion ideas so they had a bird cage chick the bird cage was cool or whatever and she said you got a boyfriend your trade work down to the to the veterinary office i mean the, the readings of them going down the runway are the, pretty much the best part of this entire show like i love so all of a sudden angel comes to blanca and rushes her to the back she says something is going on lulu tells them that she has not heard from candy in several days um, or in a couple of days and uh basically she been taking tricks down at the hotel because they've been short on money and you know candy felt like it was her responsibility to get the money so she was out there taking turning tricks okay so um they go with her she don't want to go to the hotel by herself it's always hilarious to me though like just you know on some petty shit how everybody be talking about blanca fashions and talking about how blanca look and how blanca broke and how blanca this and blanca that but when y'all hoes need help she the only one y'all be running to so she really y'all all y'all mother all you bitches is her sons really okay on some pettiness but Back to the story. Lulu tells Blanca she don't want to go to the hotel by herself. So they go down to this little sleazy motel. The guy tells them that they're not going to let him up to the room. They, they try to get up to the room. The man is like, no, I'm not letting you up there. And so Blanca leaves her phone number and, say, and they leave the picture and say, if you see her or anything, please call and let us know. I mean, he act like he don't want to, but, you know, he does take the number and they're going home. Blanca is at home coordinating the people. You know, she getting the kids together because even though she ain't living in this house, she still is our sister. Okay, so we're going to coordinate and we're gonna help find her they on phone duty but while all this is happening they get a phone call and guess who it is it's from the guy at the hotel and he said you know we don't get all that information we just see lulu coming in and she, um, blanca is trying to get her to wait till electra arrives but lulu wants to know right now and she tells her that candy is not coming home candy is dead my whole heart drive not from the previous i thought maybe candy they said attack not like killed so like 
in the previews, I thought maybe she got beat up. Maybe she just got attacked. Maybe she got hurt really, really bad. But I didn't think she was going to die. I was just like, man, no. Like, when they said it, I was like, no. But I think there's a, a method to the madness. And I will talk about that at the end of this video. It's getting long already. Electra arrives and her and Blanca uh, talk about what happened. And they're talking about what a manager said. The manager said that he was curious. So that when the maid went up to there to the room uh the maid noticed there was a bloody towel and they found her in the closet dead so if you know about paris is burning this has been said and i think several videos that i've seen but just in case y'all didn't catch that it, once again like i told y'all y'all got to watch paris is burning okay i need you to put a fire emoji down in the comments if you have watched paris is burning so we could all be on the same page and i'm gonna stop fussing at y'all once we all on one accord okay but if you remember i think it's venus extravaganza i might be wrong but i know it's the extravaganza um was found was murdered during the process of making the movie uh, very dainty very small very you know white i think you know italian or something like that um from new jersey i think she said but you know she ran away from the family was embarrassed didn't want to embarrass the family so she ran away from the family and you know living her life a small dainty petite very feminine very soft very little and you know um was kind of wild you know out there making money and you hear her talking about that and then before the end of the before they even finished child the documentary she was dead it was so sad they found her after four days under the bed strangled to death like pray tell said it'd be men that scared to deal with their own desires cowards to be honest but they found that lady four day four days later child mm -mm -mm. angel is going through she's really upset about everything because if you think about it angel be down to the pier selling her body too so um this could have very well have been her like in the if she just at the right place at the wrong time a wrong time at the right place whatever you want to call that she would have been you know, it just could have been her. So she's saying that Candy would want them to fight. Candy would not want them to sit around crying. You know, the police don't care about them because they like, yeah, they looking. But, you know, they not really looking because they don't care. They don't care about these people. Electra says that Candy won't want them to celebrate her life. So she kind of gives everybody their jobs. Angel, you going to go deal with the parents. Try to get them to come or, you know, tell them that what's going on. Everybody gets dispersed about we're going to make the funeral arrangements. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. They got to get the body. First of all, so they go to Nurse Judy and Nurse Judy is trying to convince one of her friends at the mortuary, I guess, to let the body go. And he's like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say job. And then she was like, did you talk to my homeboy? So what if he had stayed together? You know, she had to break it down the whole scenario. Like, you know, they have no rights at that time. So if you went to the hospital, I couldn't even visit you in the hospital, child. Okay, like no rights. So, like, things like this. If they died and you couldn't do this or your family could like, that would be messed up. Yeah, that would be messed up. Okay, so he released the body for them. And when they go down to the funeral, director said that Candy, he was fond of Candy. Basically, he said that Candy remember his name. I mean, you think with all the people that be coming in and out, they probably don't even remember the funeral director name. But he said, she greeted me by my name every time I came in here. And she came, I had... She, Every time, you know, somebody dies, she will be there at their funeral or whatever. So that, that touched me. And so he embalmed her body for free. And when they go up to that casket, child, I said, what in the paddle of mail? I said, why do she got to need to make a wig on? I'm confused. <laughs> like, oh, it was terrible. It was an ugly color and everything. And I promise you, as soon as I said it, Electra said the same thing. So they, they get out their makeup and they wigs and they hook her up, you know, because she looked at a mess, baby. She looked a whole mess. Angel comes and Angel is still upset. You know, she's really going through a, like a survivor's remorse thing. So she's really upset because she couldn't even get the parents to come. Blanca's like, listen, we was her family. Don't worry about that. You did what you had to do, X, Y, and Z. You did right by her. So Blanca starts the funeral. Now we end the funeral. So Blanca starts the funeral. Um, side note, that casket was lit. It was cute with the purple on the inside out and white. I was like that casket was everything low-key okay so um i need to start thinking about what my casket gonna look like because i'm going out in glam okay i'm just i'm going out glamorous <laughs> we can see that pray tell is feeling his morality throughout this whole episode and i'm gonna tell y'all one thing i'm in my you know later 30s as you get older like people you know die people you know yeah, people you know start dying. And once people your age and a little bit older maybe than you start dying or younger than you start dying, you really start to think about your mortality. Like, it's past, you know, petty stuff like relationships, girlfriends, boyfriends, friends, drama, all of that kind of stuff. You really be thinking about like, what did I do with my life? Because I could be sick. I could die. I mean, 
Child, listen, when people start dropping and make you think, honey, rethink some things. Pray tell gets up to speak and he says he ain't gonna lie. Candy was a pain in his ass, you know, they was, but they was like family. You know, family don't always get along. You know, the things you say at few people's funeral that you really don't like. They wasn't trying to sugarcoat everything because Candy really didn't get along with a whole lot of people. Um, a lot of them didn't have nothing kind to say to her when she was alive. That was kind of sad at the same time that she got all of this you know, after she's dead or whatever. He said a funny thing she said to him at a funeral was, you know, I don't know, funerals are a waste because only the living can party. But basically saying like, you doing all of this stuff for this person, they can't live, they can't respond, they can't smile, they can't see, they can't smell, they can't taste. All these things that you're doing and saying about them. So that's important to give people their flowers, okay, why they still alive. Take that. Okay, so um, so much we want to say to her and about her and how she touched our life will remain unspoken. It will have to remain unspoken to her. We won't be able to talk to her again. We have a moment of silence. And so as he goes to sit down, Candy comes to him in a premonition. And she says that she forgives him. Because if she didn't forgive people, child, her skin would be, you know, it messed up your skin. You got to forgive. You know, how, how can she make it through the world without forgiving people with all the stuff that people have done and, you know, betrayed her or whatever. She impressed. She pulled some of the, the, mo the best trade from Brooklyn, Manhattan, you know, here and there. But she never impressed him. And why? You know, why was he so mean to her and so harsh to her? And he basically tells her that... She is everything that he will want to be. She is loud, she's black, she's unapologetic, she's femme, you know, and he has spent a lot of his life trying to conform to society. You got to think about generational differences. I mean, I wouldn't say these were necessarily a generation apart, but they're far enough apart to where pray tell grew up in a time where being gay was like the worst thing in the world you could be this man already old you know what i'm saying so like older so you had to hide you had to assimilate and being in a time which we especially when you find about candy's mom and dad you know it was a little bit i ain't gonna say easier but you know you can be out a little bit and not be like in imminent death at all times i don't know how far apart they are in age part of me was trying to protect you and so he said he was jealous of her bravery because she is brave. And she was like, you know I would have killed that dog on lip singing category. You know I would have killed it. And she would have. She really would have, okay? So Angel goes to the casket. And she's really upset. Like I said, she had this whole survivor's remorse going, thing going on. And Candy comes to her. And she tells, you know, she's just like, why you? Why not me? Listen, this is, you need to use this as a reminder to not be out here trying to chase no little coins. Like, go out here and live your dreams, girl. You are the first of us. The best of them. And her duty is to, like, be a star and stay away from them damn peers. And, you know, and she told her thank you for trying with her parents. She did right by her. I thought that was nice because it was nice to have see Candy have all these, like, closing moments with the, with the entire cast since they took her so suddenly. Like, we didn't even see her, you know, um... I mean, we did see her at the beginning of the episode, but it was kind of like the intro, and then that was it. And it was she was gone after that. So, you know, I'm glad she got her moments with all these people to reconcile, right? We see Angel, she, see Lulu in, she sees Lulu in the hallway, and she goes to her, and, and you know, Lulu is not, she's not saying she can't see her like that. And Angel is trying to convince her to go in there because she's saying you're going to regret not going in there. Like, if you don't go, girl, like, you're going to feel bad about not going tomorrow, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be unbearable. Uncle and Judy have a brief moment talking about, pray tell, uh, losing weight and drinking a lot of coffee to keep his energy up. So, I don't know, y'all. I don't see, he ain't looking too good for pray tell by the end of this season i hope he gonna make it baby i don't know lulu goes up to the casket child she starts saying oh girl i miss you so much girl you know everybody looking and she was like <laughs> i didn't even like you that much you was a thief you was always telling my stuff you stole my style you stole my i said wait a minute wait a minute she had to pull her away she pulled off the girl gloves the girl brooch she was finna pull her wig off child they had to snatch her away i said lulu lulu but I'm glad they broke it up. You know, they had to break up all this sadness, child. I said, what in the actual hell is going on right now? Outside, you know, she's sitting outside smoking a cigarette and Candy comes to her and tells her that child ain't gonna be talking about this funeral forever. You know, I don't know why, you know, we're, we weren't friends. I didn't like you. You didn't like me. You were upset with me basically because I was thick. She said because she was light-skinned and thick, she was her accessory. But if you hear early in the episode, Pray Tell said something about her walking in uh, Candy's shadow all the time. So the per per perception is a mug, ain't it? She thought she stole her style Lulu wear. Girl, how? How, girl? And she said she never showed her no kindness. I was like, girl. 
But I mean, she did steal from you, sis. So, you know, I'm with you on that one. Um, Candy comes to her and says, you know, we did have some good times. Don't act like we ain't have no good times. You remember we stole that cold bitch and then we had to get up under the coat because we ain't had no heat. And you remember we did this and da-da-da-da. You're going to miss me, girl. And, you know, things are going to happen in your life. And you're going to wish you had me to talk to. You know, you're going to miss that. And she says that time will heal us a way that it would could never heal us if I was alive. So, basically, they probably would end up hating each other if they was alive. But now that she's dead, she can know about Candy and how she became who she was and why she was who she was. Because to me, Candy is mean, but it's, 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 it's like a, a wall. It's a, like a deflection for anything because she's so used to taking people bull that, you know, she got to put up that wall first and then she let it down. Some of the meanest people are like literally some of the best, sweetest, softest people on the inside, but they so mean because people, they sensitive, people hurt them and they don't want to be hurt again. So they rather put that up. You know what I'm saying? And then after they'll soften, they'll soften to you. What I loved about this episode was when Blanca and Candy are sitting in the pew holding hands, humming, yes, Jesus love me in harmony. That was a really nice moment because Blanca and Candy didn't have any like really super close relationship. But you know, it was just like, we don't want to core, we're good. You know what I'm saying? Like I can go on and, you know, be peaceful. And I just want to tell you bye, girl, because that's the type of person Blanca is. I mean, that's how she is. Electra comes and tells Blanca, look, it's some old people out in the hallway that's eating up all the refreshments, child. I need you to come and get them. And so she goes out there. And I want to say, side note, the casting that they did for these parents were was really good. Like, they actually look like they could be Candy's really parents. So, first, you know, Mama came in kind of hard with, the, you know, that was my son. That was not And she, Blanca, was very, I love Blanca. She's so diplomatic. Like, you know, Candy had a family. Like, firmly letting her know. She, she had a family. Don't worry, sis. She was good. Okay? But, you know, we want you to come in there and see that body. That's your child as well. We want to make you comfortable. So, they go in there. And then Candy comes to both the parents. So, she comes to the mother first. And, um, well, Blanca says that, I thought this was a moment, she said that she was one of a kind. Candy, uh, Candy and the mom, why did it take you so long to see me? And, um, he said, I thought you knew because I played in your hats, I played in your wigs, you know, and your makeup. And she said she just thought he was creative, you know, gay at best, but to be a woman, you know, how could she handle it? It was a really nice moment between the two of them to see how people deal with it because a lot of times I think that, um, you know, parents, they don't have no notebook, they don't have no handbook on how to be a parent and how you should handle certain things. It's very, it's very confusing on both sides of the situation. I think it's an honest moment to say, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know and I didn't know what to do. And so he thought that they were accepting him and understanding him. And, and when he got that rejection, it hurt him and he ran away. I think that's what happened. I don't know if he got put out or he ran away. Somebody let me know. I don't know that story. I don't know if they ever informed us of that. But it seems like the father sort of knew when he goes to the father, the father, I mean, he bought him a dollhouse. The father knew, okay, he liked feminine things, but he tough, you know, he tight to tackle, he a fighter, but he just liked feminine things. He wanted you know, the dollhouse. He bought a dollhouse house for him um he kind of knew you know something was different i don't know like i said it's one thing to think your son is gay or feminine you know or you know whatever but to want to be you know feel like you a whole nother sex i mean that's a lot that's a jump you know for me to sit down and think well maybe they transgender like i'm not gonna come to that conclusion you know, normally, but I mean, whatever, whatever went down with the family, you know what I'm saying? He got rejected. When you set up the house for me, you gave me the confidence. I felt that I could, you know, be myself and be the person that I am. And so, um, he says, well, I don't want to let you go. We just getting started. He's like, but you got to let me go. You know, it is. It's so sad that your parents finally see you after your death. They couldn't bring themselves to understand you or try to get to know you better you know, for what you feel like you are and what you, you know what I mean? Like in your life and now they have to deal with that in their death. I got to live with that for the rest of their life. So that was kind of sad. It was happy and sad. At least we got a little, you know what I'm saying? Resolving. The MCs come in and they're making a special announcement. So they've decided to put the lip syncing category in and they're going to call it Candy Sweet Refrain. They're going to put it in every ball. And uh, they light the lighters and you know, it's too candy. I thought that was a very nice moment. Then we have a back from the dead, one night only, okay, casket fresh, candy jumps out, 
and she do Stephanie Mills. I never had a love like this. I never knew a love like this before. And she killed it, honey. She was giving me a bit of Diana tea. She was giving me a Dream Girls tease. Like, I was here for it, okay? I was here for the Jerry Curl wig, the Whitney Houston. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. That was the oh, I want to dance with somebody wig. I wanted, I guess. She was giving it to us. She was giving me twirls. She was giving me shimmies. You know, she was giving me fringes. Like, I was here for Miss Candy. And that's how you do it, baby. If you're going to take somebody out, you give them their moment, honey. She had her moment. She said, one more time, hoes. I'm going to twirl around here and give it to you. Ten, 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 ten. Across the goddamn board, she did that. So they all go back to Blanca's house to eat. This is House of Extravaganza. House of... I'm not Extravaganza. House of... Wintour. House of... Evangelista and the house of ferocity. So they all eating at the house, you know, they cheering to Candy and um, kind of go back to normal, you know, start to talk about each other. Boy, what's going on with your wig? He said he doing the um, Josephine Baker homage, okay? A tribute, so that's why he got his waves and his curls sitting like he do, honey. He's giving you body waves. Pray tell him Blanca clean up when everybody leaves and Pray tell says give him some water. So she gives him some water and he pulls out the AZT pills. He said he started thinking about the children, all their big hopes and dreams, and he don't want to live this life with no rest. Because Candy did say, you know, I was myself and I I I was myself unapologetically because when I leave this world, I don't want to leave with no regrets. I mean, here your life, you know, look like out there, your life might not be that long anyway, so why not live it to the fullest? So he said he don't want to live this life with no regrets, leave this life with no regrets, and your life is very precious, and he don't want to waste it. And so Blanca tells him that she's so proud of him. I want somebody to encourage me. Like Blanca encouraged him. My God, Blanca B, listen. At the mother of the year, what we not going to do is give it to Electra. What we going to do is give it to Blanca once again because, like I said, all these bitches is her sons. Every time they need help, who is they running to? Who you going to call? Call Blanca! Y'all be running to her for counsel, for help, and for everything else you need. I mean, and Electra, you was her mother. Blanca, mother of the year. Very sad for me to see Candy go. I'm not going to lie. I was a little upset. This is my theory. A lot of people, some people were, not a lot of people, some people were upset because they felt like they're they're getting rid of, like, one of the major dark-skinned characters on the show. She was one of the only dark-skinned characters and getting rid of her. I don't know nothing about that, okay? But what I do think is they're getting rid of a beloved character. Like, Candy was one of them characters that you love to hate her. She was around her one-liners. I don't give a damn when nobody said Candy was damn near the funniest. Down next to Pray Tell, the funniest person on this show, hands down, off the cuff. Like, she was hilarious. So, I think they're giving getting rid of her because when death takes somebody like that, it often takes somebody that's kind of around you think that we're always gonna be around because candy wasn't like no main character but you just figured she was somebody who would just always be around you know and now <laughs> gone because when death comes in real life that's how it comes it's snatch just like that and if you think about all the transgender men and women who have been out here who have been killed been murdered by people who are cowards um they, somebody loved them. They had a family somewhere. Somebody cared about them. They're not nobodies. They're not people who just are expendable. They are people. You know what I'm saying? And they deserve justice like just like anybody else. And it's a shame that they have to be forced into these types of jobs because they can't get a job in a regular you know, in a regular office because when you present your ID, it says one thing and you look like another thing. I think that's horrible. I'm like, I tell people all the time, I believe that, first of all, I got a lot of things going on in my own life to be worried about what's going on in somebody else's drawers and bedroom, number one. Okay, that's probably the first thing. And second of all, I believe that I don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in, so I'm not going to beat you over the head with what my beliefs are. I believe that you should live your life the way that you see fit. And then when you get to God and when you get out on judgment day, you can talk about whatever you got going on with him. Just like I'm going to have to talk about some things with him myself. Okay, so I don't, you know, I, I believe in live and let live. Love who you love. Live your life. You know, live your best life. And don't go back and forth with these niggas. Okay, for real. But a lot of people can't do that. I think that um, people don't know how to deal with their emotions and their feelings that they have on the inside. And they end up taking it out on people. 
you know and uh it's so sad to see this character going like i said i think they did it because they want us to see that that's how it happens it snatches people that you love you know it snatches people that you care about it snatches away people in their lives and they mean something you know so so um all in all i thought it was a great episode i want to hear what you think uh what did you think about miss candy what's your favorite candy one liner you can put that down in the comments i shed so many tears all this episode like i was crying i mean i was really crying hard all right so all right i'll see y'all tomorrow for queen sugar um i'll holler at you next week don't forget to like comment and subscribe hey new subscribers how y'all doing all right i'll holler at y'all next week peace